Hi folks and uh, welcome to another video with me, Mackenzie Photo, and this week I want to talk about you. Are you hurting your own photography? Let's get into it, roll intro. Okay, so are you hurting your own photography? What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is, are you just continually shooting and not getting the results that you want? Now, there is some factors that even I'm guilty of that um, could be avoided by a few simple techniques. Now, I've written down some stuff, some key points, and I'm gonna go over them. Are you overshooting? What I mean by that is you get memory cards now that can hold up to easily 500 raw images for a good memory card of a decent size um, and with that people find themselves overshooting and not really concentrating on thinking about an image to create so you'll find someone that and I've been guilty of it myself shooting 10 frames of the exact same thing not changing anything up not slowing down to think about the image so I'm just spraying and praying and I'm sure users are guilty of it as well. I think everyone's done it at some point because you have the freedom to do that with digital photography. Um, because you have this vast amount of frames that you can shoot, you do tend to shoot a lot more. Limit yourself to the amount of frames that you can use. Now the maximum amount of frames on a 35 mil was, on a 35 mil was 36 frames in a row. You usually got 24, you could get up to 36 if you paid a little bit more. I always ended up buying the 36. But 36 frames nowadays is considered nothing. But back then it was quite a lot of frames to have on a roll. And you were limited to that roll of film that was in your camera. The ISO couldn't be changed, it could be changed from color to black and white. It was what it was and it was 36 frames of that. So you had to make your choices before going out and setting this. So I think you should maybe give yourself a self exercise of limiting yourself. Try limiting yourself. You can change your aperture and speed obviously, but you can't change your ISO and you can't change your color profile. You have to limit yourself to 24 images. Say you took out a couple of rolls of film. At max, say give yourself three rolls of film. So what's three times 24? I, I can't do math inside my head, so I'll put it up on the bottom of the screen here. And that's the amount of frames that you get to use for that day. Think about the frame. Think about what you're shooting, rather than just shooting happy. Take the time to actually compose it, rather than going quickly getting set up because the clouds are moving or the model's hair's blowing right there. Should, Take a bit more time and think about your frame. Think about how you're going to shoot it. Are you going to shoot it down low? Shoot it up high? Shoot it straight on? Um, are you going to use any specific filters? Are you need to do something else? Or is there is a hair in the way if it's a portrait? Think about the frame before shooting in and realizing later that it's going to cost you a lot more time and editing or the frame's just not going to be any use whatsoever. Experiment with your new limitations. Okay, experiment within 24 frames or those 36 frames, however you're going to set yourself up, but experiment because if you're shooting the same old stuff time and time again and you're spraying and praying, you're just, you're not going to be happy with your photography. So push yourself, experiment, use gels, um, try something completely different. Push yourself out of your comfort zone and you might be surprised at the results or you might find a completely new avenue of photography that you fall in love with as well and you want to start educating yourself and want to grab every little bit of information and push yourself further and further in that field. It's a great way to learn new things and find new interests. So please take these limitations but also give yourself experiments to do with these limitations that I'm giving you. Um, these are just little things that you can do that can help improve your photography. It helped me improve mine. Um, I'm not saying the results will be great for everyone, but they might be great for one or two of you, and it, it'll be a worthwhile exercise. Slow down. You've only, if you're doing this exercise and you're limiting yourself to a number of frames, slow down. Really think about that frame. It goes back to the other points, they all intermingle. 
slow down, really think about what you're about to shoot, study the frame, and before you press the trigger, know that what you're going to photograph is what you want. If you go in there, guns are blazing, you just start shooting off randomly, and things are not quite right in this part of the frame, but perfect in this part of the frame, and then you realize that and it's all changed again, try and get everything perfect the way you want it. Please slow down. Take your time with that frame. You've only, if you're doing the exercises, you're limiting yourself to a set number of frames that you can use for that shoot and you will get a much better result. Trust me on that, so slow down. Make a contact print. These are absolutely fantastic and invaluable for evaluating the work that you've done. Um, one, it's something tactile that you can feel and you can study and look at rather than on a screen because it's great on Lightroom and stuff where you've got it in the bottom, you can quickly move in between. But actually having a contact print like this, where it shows all your frames in a small one, you can actually go away from the computer and sit down and study it a bit better. And Lightroom does have the facilities to make contact prints. So print yourself off a contact print, sit down and study it and note things down on a contact print, where you went wrong in this frame, what you did better in that frame, what's, what's the better composition in each one. Trust me, it'll help you and keep these. When you're out shooting, you're not allowed to delete the frames that you mess up. You've got 24 frames. If you mess up a frame, that's it, tough luck. Because when you worked with film, you didn't have that option of deleting and going back. So you've got 24 frames on, say, a roll of film, that's it. That way, if you make a mistake, you have to learn from it. And with a contact print, you will be able to see your mistake physically on a piece of paper, study it and learn from where you went wrong. Or if, it, or if messing up that frame made you realize that you're going too fast, fantastic. You'll know for next time. And the more you do these experiments, the better you'll become and using a small amount of time scale to get the shots that you want. It's gonna save you money and time in the long run. It's gonna cost a bit more just now with ink and paper or if you're sending off film. If you're doing this on film, fantastic. If you're trying to emulate film with digital, doing it this way, fantastic again. But doing these little things will help you become a better photographer. Once you've decided that you want to print a frame from your images, print it. Don't just leave it on the computer, actually print it. Print it A4 or A3 if you've got bigger. Or if you're like me and you've got an industrial size printer in your living room because you're an idiot and you bought it on eBay one night, um, well, slightly inebriated, um, and it was going for cheap, then you spent about a month fixing it. But I ended up with an industrial printer in my living room. But I find it completely worthwhile. <laughs> But if you've got a small printer at home, get it printed or use one of these online things that you can get prints for free and you get little six by fours. Get your images printed up. It's such a different experience having a tactile thing to show your work. Now I know I've only got contact sheets here, but I do have loads of prints kicking about. Um, not within arm's reach, so I'm not gonna grab them just now. But these are absolutely invaluable in improving your photography. And once you see your print in person, it makes such a difference, especially on that piece of photographic paper. It just feels different to view it on a screen. Show people your work. Show people that you know well, your family, your friends. Show people your work. Get feedback from it, Some pe or get other photographers to give you feedback on it. There's no point in you shooting and not showing your work and no one's saying anything about it. Show it to your family, your friends, your colleagues. Now, as many of you know, I suffer from cancer. It's my second round of cancer, and this time it's in my liver. Um, I'm going in for surgery soon, and hopefully they'll get it all, and then this will be the last surgery that I have to have to get rid of it. Now, we are all capable, boys and girls, of checking the places where we need to check. So, girls, you know what to check, boys, you need to know what to check. And all you do is have to give them a feel, and if there's anything strange, go to your doctor. If you've been feeling unwell for a few weeks, go to your doctor. If you're worried about anything, go to your doctor. 
don't self-diagnose on WebMD or anything like that. Go to your doctor. These are medical professionals that have studied for years. And if you're worried, they're there to help you. I don't want anyone to suffer with what I've had to go through. So please, check yourself against cancer. And also, if you want to support me through my journey through cancer or, or support my work that I'm doing on YouTube, you can go to my website, www.mckenziephoto.com. I'll just put it on the bottom of the screen there. And you can have a look at my work. And there's also a shop there. And I've got some apparel on there that says, fuck cancer. There's also censored versions as well. If you don't want to be wearing a big FU sign walking about. But um, yeah, if you want to go on there and buy something to get something for yourself or donate to support me in any way, it's greatly appreciated. Or you can just send nice comments. Um, it's more than appreciated. You don't know, just those little things just help. Anyway, I'm going to give you a discount code for the shop. It's Mackenzie Photo 10. Again, I've put it up at the bottom of the screen. And I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.